She was body rolling and she was singing Promise. And you know, if you have been a Sierra fan, you know Promise is like her, I guess, I would probably say biggest hit besides Goody. But anyway, she was singing Promise and she was body rolling and this, that, and the other. And all of a sudden, somebody in the audience reaches up, hands her a piece of paper. She picks up that piece of paper and she looks at it and she hits an ooh baby in the middle of her song. She she goes like ooh baby or some something, and you could I could see on her face the the slight distress because when she looked at the paper she's like ooh baby or some I don't know what it was I don't know and she tried to play it off like it was part of her song but she was really feeling some kind of way because the person in the audience handed her a summons to court. They reached up there in the middle of her show and said, you've been served, sis. I'm so sorry about it. You've been served. And you have to come to court now. <laughs> and she went on. She tossed the paper bag at the girl. She just threw it and, um, and went on about her show. She probably didn't get as much life from herself as she was getting before because she was kind of feeling it at first and then they handed her the paper. And, um, and then the camera panned back to this young woman that gave her the, the summons that served her or whatever. And she was like, she was in the camera. She was like, she might have thrown it back, but she been served. That took all the courage. I don't know. It just really, I feel like that was a ballsy thing to do. It's just, to just walk up there and summons her in the middle of her show. In the very middle. While she was body rolling and getting her life. Like, just, here you go, sis. You've been served. Sorry about it. Like, what? I live for it because I'm always a fan of the villain more than the superhero. But I really, in this situation, don't know who is the villain. Anyway, what I'm getting to is um, Mary J. Blige is in a similar situation because the summons that Sierra received was for missing a show. They paid her to come do the show. She didn't show up. She didn't pay them back. So she's being sued, basically. It's you know, that's what I heard. I'm neither party, so I don't know the truth truth, but from what I've heard, that's what the summons was, and that's what's what's populating right now. So I'm, I'm reading today my little gossip magazine on my phone, because who picks up paper anymore? I'm being nosy, because I live for trash. I live for it all. Amanda Bynes, I'm living for her at this very moment in time, because I feel like she's acting anyway. I feel like she's really not crazy. But you know, whatever. I feel like she's probably doing drugs, but who isn't doing drugs in Hollywood? I don't feel like she's that crazy. Anyway, so I live for junk like that. So I was checking up on my boo Amanda, trying to see, you know, what she's gotten into this weekend. You know, whatever. Who got into it on Father's Day, that kind of deal. 
and I come across Mary J. Blige's name, and I'm sitting here, you know, it, I stopped for a moment, because I, my initial thought was Mary J. Blige, why is she in a gossip, in a tabloid, why, like, that was like my initial, why is she in a tabloid, because Mary J. Blige ain't doing not nothing, not nothing, at this moment in time like the last time I really saw her um, try to give me some some music I guess you could call it was one year and two months ago when she came to me with crispy chicken fresh lettuce three cheeses ranch dressing wrapped up in a tasty flour tortilla crispy chicken you know like that like when that young man walked up into Burger King, minding his own business, minding his very own, like his only own business. The only business he had to, on this very today was to grab him a bite to eat at Burger King. That's all he was trying to do. That's literally it. He wasn't, he didn't have any ulterior motives. He didn't come in there with a mask, like put the money in the bag. He was literally minding his very own business. And he walks in the store, into the Burger King, and he sees a new item on the menu. He looks up, he says, huh, what's in the crispy chicken wrap? And the young woman behind the counter looks at him perplexed, like, what's in the crispy chicken wrap? The manager walks by, he stops, and he looks at bro, and he's like, what's in the crispy chicken wrap? There's a young man busting tables in a bag. He's wiping down the table. He stops and he's like, did this nigga just ask what's in the crispy chicken? How very dare you ask me what's in the crispy chicken? Like, I can't believe this Negro here. This was a white man too, but they looked at him like he was Kuta Kente and he refused to call himself Toby. Like, that's what he looked, these people looked at him like. They looked like slave masters and they were like, your name is Toby, boy. And, and he was like, no, I'm sorry. I just want to know what's in the crispy chicken wrap. So anyway, I probably would look at him the same way if I knew what was coming directly after. And it's and if you haven't seen the crispy chicken commercial from last year, you just missed out on a treat. Because all of a very sudden, just out of nowhere, Mary J. Blige pops up in the middle of Burger King with a stage. She pops up. So it's like... Hmm, what's in the crispy chicken wrap? 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 And then Mary J comes out of nowhere. What's in the crispy chicken wrap? With her arm, she got her hand on her hip. You can't see. She got her hand on her hip. And she's, she's like, did you just ask what's in the crispy chicken wrap? Is that what you... You walked up in this Burger King to ask specifically what's in the crispy chicken wrap? Let me pop up at the floor. With my stage, I ain't got not a backup singer, not a backup dancer, nothing. Let me give you this show. Crispy chicken, fresh lettuce. And that's what she gave them. Like she... I lived for that commercial, but I hated it so much. I hated it with a passion. But I would watch it every day. I would go specifically to YouTube, find the video, and watch it, and jam out, and then feel so bad about it after. She looked like... <laughs> I can't tell. What's in the crispy chicken wrap? Five, six. Crispy chicken, fresh lettuce, three cheeses, ranch dressing wrapped up in a tasty flour tortilla, crispy chicken. Wrapped up in a... Like, she tried to hit a high note in everything. And I'm sitting here like, Mary, I'm not about to get my life off of this song about chicken at a Burger King. I'm not about to do it, but I accidentally did, so. So that was the last time we saw Mary um, trying to serve us with her vocals. The last time I actually saw Mary was, I think it was August of last year. It might have been sooner than, I don't know, sis. I really don't. Last time I saw her, though, was with that Lifetime movie, um, Malcolm and Eddie. Malcolm and Maude and Coretta and Be Betty and Coretta. And she played Betty Shabazz. And she served. Listen, I'm not even a Mary J fan, 
but she served like she literally served me everything I needed playing Betty Shabazz. I'm not about to tell you otherwise because there's nothing else to say. She served it and also Angela Bassett played Coretta, which gave me every ounce of my life. It gave me every little bit of my life that I could gather because she was Coretta Scott King. She had the, the hair piece, you know, the, you know, the Coretta with the, <laughs> she had the, like she was serving me. Coretta and I lived for it. I leached life from the television. Like I put my mouth to the glass of that TV and sucked every bit of life out of that movie. What, 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 what?